is a day again of challenges between Ghanaian traders and Nigerian traders here at the Opera Square. The Ghanaian traders are moving around and they're locking shops. We are going to go into the shops or actually into the market and observe what exactly is transpiring. Over a dozen of the traders armed with padlocks and other equipment move from shop to shop. The idea is to target shops that are owned by foreigners, mostly Nigerian retailers. The idea is to move the people out and lock the shops. In instances where the traders, that the Nigerian traders are able to produce documentary proof, they are told to present it to the office for vetting at a subsequent date. Meanwhile, the exercise continues with little resistance from the Nigerians. In the past, there has been serious resistance from the Nigerians who insisted that they were doing legitimate business. But subsequent to that, the police had since intervened. This would not be the first time the police are coming to the scene to quell tensions. It was bloody at the last encounter. So that's a squad uh, which is leading the operation. The, the idea is to lock all shops that are owned by foreigners. And today, uh, they've actually even added Chinese-owned uh, shops. And so they've moved from one shop and are going to another shop. We're going to trail them and see what they're going to do next. Um, so um, there, there you have it, um, number 52F, 52F, um, one container has just been closed and this is an exercise that has been happening all morning and uh, it is it's for the umpteenth time if you like, it's a recurring issue between uh, Ghanaian traders uh, who are opposed to the involvement of foreigners in retail business. This morning, a loose group of traders embarked on an exercise to lock shops that they believe belong to foreign nationals. And today, they are interestingly also targeting Chinese-owned shops in addition to the Nigerian shops. So this is a squad that is just moving from shop to shop. Shops that have identified as being owned by foreigners are to be locked. Now, if the owners are around, they would ask them to pack their staff in there gently. If they are not, they would do it for them. And when they finish, they lock it with a padlock, which they usually would mark. Now, this is a 52nd shop that has just been locked, and it's, it's marked 52F. This is a, a cyclical issue. It's a recurring issue that is repeating itself almost every other week in lots of markets in Ghana. It is a turf war between Ghanaian traders and their counterparts who are foreigners, most especially the Nigerian traders. Let me, let me, let me attempt to, uh, let, let's have an understanding. I, I am being drowned here. The voice, um, okay. Uh, it, it, this is our country, this is our nation. We will do what, what is right in this nation. We are allowed to come and operate which any sector in this country. You, you know, in Ghana. But you we will never allow them to come and operate to a retail sector. But you don't have the power to enforce laws. The police should do that. If police will not do it, we will do it ourselves. Let me attempt to speak to their leader. Uh, this, this gentleman here um, is the leader of this group. Hello, uh, what, what's your name? My name is Ronald. Ronald what? Ronald Danakwame. You are the one who led the team today uh, to lock the shops. No, so why? I wasn't the one who led the team today. I'm one of the executives. Okay. I'm the PRO of Ghana Electrical Dealers Association. So you support what's happening? 100%. Why? Why? We are not doing anything against foreigners. We are just enforcing the laws of this country. With our civil rights. We have a civil right here. If the law enforcement refuses to enforce the law, we will use our civil rights, but what we will be cautious of, not to hurt, not to destroy, or not to damage any property. Yes. But what we are doing is just to enforce the GIPC law 8, 5, 6, 27, and 28. But who gave you the power of enforcement, though? That, that's, that's what I'm saying. We are using our civil rights. We are exercising our civil rights. As a civilian, I have a civil right to do a civil arrest, don't I? Yes. 
Yes, but so you're not arresting, why, you're closing yes. people's shops. Why can't I have a civil civil opportunity to enforce the law on behalf of the law enforcement? What proof do you have that these people whose shops you're closing are actually Nigerians or foreigners? Don't limit it to only Nigerians. Yes, that's why I said foreigners. Yes. Every foreigner here, we know them. How, how do you know them? How, know, how, how, how do you know have Ghanaian? Even if I travel and I see Ghanaian, I'll see a Ghanaian. When would you open the shops that you've closed? We will not open it until the laws are enforced. There are so many Ghanaian products that are got uh, rotten. rotten. They are being rotten at the Nigerian port. Mm -hmm. We send our senior men there just for them to come and hear that they have increased the closure of the border to January. Okay. They are enforcing their laws. Why can't we enforce our laws? So th that's, that's a summary of what the, the position being held by the Ghanaian uh, traders. There's a gentleman who is carrying padlocks. He's, a, he's almost like the padlock carrier who has been going with the team the whole day today. And they've been locking. And they've locked so many shops, close to 60 shops. Now, the shops are owned by foreigners. But a lot of these foreigners are Nigerians. I'm going to move over now and speak to the president of the Nigerian Union of Traders Association. Hello, sir. Welcome to City TV, City Newsroom. Hello, Maro. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. We are back again to the same issue. Yes. What is the problem today? Yeah, close up the shops of Nigeria's traders in uh, Oppress Square. They said they gave you time to open, I mean, to move out. That's why they decided to strike again today. We did and not that you have, have an no agreement with them. When we went to the police, that is, we did not agree that we should close the shops. Police told them to go and open, and they opened. There's nothing like time. If they give time, it didn't come to us. And of course, we are not the people to receive the time from them. They should send it to the government. So you're going to continue to do this business then? You are, you are, not, you are not worried by the repeatedly, uh, repeated acts from the Ghanaian traders? I'm very, very worried. I'm, I'm surprised that the government have not done anything since then. The, the issue on the ground is that it's just few Nigerians are having shops here. And I can agree with me, Omaro, that this place is a place people who sell electrical from other parts of the country come to buy. This is actually a wholesale place. Mm. So I don't see the reason of you know, agitation. All right, so th this is not the first time the police are having to come on the scene to try and calm the tensions. And it is happening again. The previous Accra Regional Commander has come here a number of times to attempt to solve the problem. Today, the new Regional Commander for Accra is also here with his team. Commander, you're welcome to City TV. Thank you. And uh, I'm sure this is the first time you are coming here, but oh, in the yes. past we have been here a number of times. What is your briefing telling you like, and what did you meet today? Oh, in fact, uh, you know, you know what is happening in, in terms of this uh, Guta issue. Uh, I think last week we met uh, the executive when they said they were going to make a, pre uh, a press conference. So we advised them to restrain themselves to that intention of doing a press conference, not to do any other thing. And in fact, they did it accordingly, and there was no problem. Uh, but we heard that though their counterparts in Kumasi uh, have locked up some shops belonging to the foreigners. So we anticipated the same thing here. So this morning, we, 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 we sent our intelligent team to go around to actually see what is happening around Opera Square and its environs. And uh, our information was that some of the shops belonging to foreigners have been closed down. So we decided to come ourselves to see. And, uh, in fact, when we got there, uh, we, we realized, we saw that some shops belonging to foreigners have been closed. So what we have decided to do now uh, is to invite the executive of the Ruta Association so I'll sit down with them and then they have discussions with them on the issue. So you're inviting them to the regional command? Immediately. This is still City Newsroom. I am Omaru Sanda Amadou.